consider the plane x minus 2y plus z is equal to 7. Are the following lines parallel to our plane? Then determine points of intersection of the line and the plane. First line. In symmetric form, it's going to be given by x minus 2 over 3 equals y over minus 1 equals z plus 2 over 1. Now, I'm not going to be able to work with this in symmetric form, so we want to convert to parametric equations. So we'll set each of these terms here equal to t, and then just unwind, solve for x, y, and z. So for instance, if we have x minus 2 over 3 equal to t, push the 3 over gives me 3t, move the 2 over, we get 2 plus 3t. Then I do that for y and z. So these are our parametric equations. Now the first thing we want to check is our line parallel to our plane. So if I look at the picture for a line parallel to a plane, what do we have? Well, first, we'll have direction of our line. I'll denote that by the vector v. Then we'll have the normal direction to the plane. Okay, that's going to be the perpendicular to the plane. Denote that by the vector n1. You'll note by looking at the picture, if we're parallel, that means n1 and v are going to be perpendicular. So the dot product of n1 and v is going to be equal to 0. Now, how do we get n1 and v? Well, for our plane, we get n1 by just peeling the coefficients off of x, y, and z if our equation's in this form. So our normal direction is going to be 1 minus 2, 1. Then for the direction of our line, our v, we can go to the parametric equations, just peel off the coefficients of t. So we'll get 3 minus 1, 1. I take the dot product, what do we get? 3 plus 2 plus 1 gives me a 6. So our line and our plane are not parallel. Now the options would be, they're parallel, either you have no intersection or the line is contained in the plane. Then if they're not parallel, they intersect in exactly one point. How do we get that point? Well, what we're going to do is, we're going to take our parametric equations, substitute into the equation for the plane, We'll solve for t, and then we can go back and use that t in the parametric equations to get our x, y, and z. So let's do that. So first step, we're going to put our parametric equations into the equation for the plane. Then we're just going to solve for t. So we just push everything through. Out's going to come t equals 7 over 6. Now, I'm going to take that 7 over 6, put it into my x, y, and z in the parametric equations. So we do that here. So what comes out, we're going to have the point 11 halves minus 7 over 6 minus 5 over 6. Now, we should check that's going to be a point in the plane. So I'll take that point, put it in the equation for the plane. What comes out? Well, you'll note when you work it out, what comes out is going to be 7. And that's what we expect. So our point satisfies the equation of the plane. So it's a point in the plane. Now, one thing we check for the line is just to see if we put our point in to our symmetric equations, okay, that the number that comes out for each term is going to be equal. So when we do that, we're always going to get a 7 over 6, and that's no surprise. That's how we got t. We let t be equal to each of these for a given point. For our next line, we have x minus 2 over 1 equals y over 1 equals z plus 2 over 1. We're set each term equal to t, isolate x, y, and z. That gives us our parametric equations. Then I'm going to peel the coefficient off of each t. That'll give me the vector 1, 1, 1. And I'll use that for the direction of our line. Now, if we take the dot product of n1 with v, that's going to give me 0. So that means our line is parallel to our plane. The options that we have, either there's no intersection at all, or the line is completely contained in the plane. So it's all or nothing. Now, to see what we have, I just need to check one point on the line. So if I set t equals 0, it's going to give me the point 2, 0, minus 2. I'm going to put that into the equation of the plane. What comes out is going to be 0. So that means my point is not on the plane. 
which means we can't have any intersection at all, okay? If we were contained in the plane, that point would have to wind up being contained in there also. So here we have parallel, but our line is not contained in the plane. Now, another check, just take our parametric equations for x, y, and z, stick them into the equation of the plane, see what comes out. So if we do that, what comes out when we solve? Okay, so that's x minus 2y plus z. We're always getting zero, no matter what t is. So that's going to mean no points in your line satisfy x minus 2y plus z equals 7. So it's just another way to see that we have no intersection. For our third line, same idea. We use x minus 4 over 1 equals y minus 1 over 1 equals z minus 5 over 1. We set each term equal to t. We get our parametric equations. Then you note here, we're going to have our same direction for the line. Okay, I'm going to use the vector v equals 1, 1, 1. So we're going to get the perpendicular property. So here we're either parallel or we're contained. Now, we set t equals 0. I'm going to get the point 4, 1, 5 on my line. We put it into the equation of the plane. Then we'll see that this point satisfies the equation of the plane. So that's going to mean if I have one point on my line, okay, contained in the plane, then the whole entire line has to be in there. So here we have the line is contained in the plane. Again, you could check by taking your parametric equations, okay, put them in for x, y, and z in the equation of the plane. What's going to come out? Well, you note here all the t's are going to go away, and you're going to be left with 7. So what does this mean? This means no matter what you choose for t in your parametric equations of the line, so it means no matter what point you pick off of your line, put that point into your equation of the plane, it's going to satisfy that equation. So all of our points satisfy the equation of the plane.